There is a giant pile of wood in my workshop. This is a problem that needs a solution. I want to build a heavy duty wood storage cart that can move around the workshop and hold a boatload of scrap wood of all different types. There's a ton of different wood cart storage solutions out there. I looked at all the popular ones, the unique ones, the obscure ones, and took all the best features to design my cart. It holds just so much wood. It has drawers underneath for the tiny pieces, cubbies for small pieces, mm -hmm. vertical bins for the longer pieces, and a space for the sheet goods. I'll go over the measurements as I build it. The first thing to build is the frame. I made a bunch of cuts on the circular saw and brought all my cut pieces inside. I first built two identical risers. The long boards are 66 inches and the three short boards are 17 inches. The middle board is roughly in the center and I used two long screws at each connection. After building the two risers, I added legs to the inside corners. I put clamps on each leg to give a small shelf to hold the next riser in place to screw in. I guess I could have flipped it over, but this worked fine. The cart is relatively large, so it took three sheets of plywood to cut all the pieces. There's a bunch of unique pieces to cut out, so as I cut out each one, I'll add the dimensions to the list. I'll assign each piece a letter to make it easier to find during assembly. You know how they say measure twice and cut once? Yeah, I didn't do that. In fact, I generally don't do that, and it's a bad habit, I know. I'm working on it. Well, in this case, I was supposed to make cuts at 66 inches, and instead I made cuts at 6 foot 6 inches. It's all good. I just had to shorten it up a bit. Measure twice, kids. The first piece to go on is the top of the riser. This helps straighten it up if it was out of square at all. From then, I just started adding the outside pieces in a way that makes the most sense. I used inch and a half long screws anywhere above the riser that was a plywood to plywood connection. The vertical box in the back will turn into shelving for various medium sized pieces. And this big area in the front will divide up a bit. For now, I just divided it roughly in half long ways. This open face section is 50 inches long and will fit plywood scraps like the ones left over from building this cart. I tipped it over so I could add casters at all four corners. These were three inch casters capable of holding 125 pounds each. In a bit, I'll show you why that wasn't enough, and how I remedied the problem. While I was laying on the ground, I added in the shelves. There's an 11 to 12 inch void between each shelf. The spaces didn't have to be even, but they did have to be level. Then the top cap goes right on top.
It's not quite done yet, but it was looking really good already. These were the only pieces I didn't calculate ahead of time. I knew the width, but not the height. I could have done the math, but because of the incline, I just figured it out here. I added two dividers to make this space into three bins for various size pieces. This is where I'll store long planks and boards, metal pieces, long dowels, and stuff like that. Just like the shelves, this could be adjusted to make one bin larger than another, or have more bins or less bins. We still have this large cavity underneath to finish. This is where a few drawer-like bins will go to hold small scraps. I used some extra half-inch plywood as a base, using two pieces to split the middle of that 2x4. I'm going to make three drawer bins. They will all have the same height and depth, but two will be wider and one will be skinnier. There's nothing too special about these boxes. It's just half-inch plywood glued and nailed together. They just slide right into place. I'll eventually make or buy handles for them, but either way, they're easy to grab and bring over to where I'm working. A scrap wood pile is kind of like a scrapbook for all your previous projects. This pile has pieces from dozens of projects in the past, such as the barn doors, the dog run, living room mantle, my raised office, etc. etc. As I loaded the cart, if there were any pieces I didn't want to hold on to, this was the time to throw them out. So these casters are rated for 125 pounds each. After loading the cart, it was clear that these were not good enough. I mean, they would roll, <laughs> but they looked like flat tires. I didn't want to unload and reload the cart, so I lifted it with a car jack and quite literally changed the tires. These new ones are rated for 330 pounds. I set some blocks underneath for safety as I worked. This thing rolled much better with new wheels. I added handles on either end to make it easier to maneuver around. With all the wood loaded, it's got some serious weight and needs some serious force to get going. It's not too heavy though, I can handle it. The reason for designing it with these dimensions is so it can fit in this space between the office and the large lumber storage. It rolls right in and can be easily pulled out to find the right piece. I don't know if this is its permanent home, but it works well for now. Here is a full cut list for building the frame, the cart, and the drawers. I am very glad to finally have a place to store all this extra wood. It's been accumulating over the years, and now there is one cart to hold it all. I'll now be more encouraged to use scrap pieces from here before tearing into a new sheet. The drawers are organized, but may evolve over time. Right now, one is for three quarter inch pieces, one is for small stud cutoffs, and one is for half inch scraps. This cart isn't yet at max capacity, but it definitely looks pretty full. Okay, that's it for now. See ya. Drop it, drop it, drop it. Drop it, drop it, excuse me. What are we doing? Excuse me.